This is a brand new 2017 Range Rover Evoque convertible. The original MSRP of this vehicle was $62,945, and the owner of this one skimped on two option packages that could have brought that up to $69,445. 69,445 for this thing. It doesn't make any sense, and today I'm gonna show you why. I've borrowed this car here in Miami using Turo, which is this service that lets you rent other people's interesting cars instead of normal, boring rental cars from normal, boring rental car companies that make you stand in line for 45 minutes before giving you a Malibu with hubcaps. Now, Turo gives me a budget to rent cars, and there are a lot of cool ones here in Miami. Maserati, BMW, Porsche, AMG. But when I saw the Evoque convertible, I was instantly in love. I was in love because, come on, look at this thing. It's so ridiculous. I mean, it's a Range Rover, but it's not really a Range Rover, right? It's the baby Range Rover, the Evoque, and it uses the same four-cylinder engine from the Ford Fusion. I'm serious about that. Look it up. And it's also a convertible for $70,000. I'm so glad I got my hands on this thing because I really believe this is one of the most senseless cars currently for sale in the United States. And today, I'm going to show you why, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Evoque convertible, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer where I've written a column about my experience with this thing. Let's start with a simple fact. People purchase SUVs because they want utility. They want the ability to go anywhere and do anything and bring anyone along for the ride. And that's why every single two-door SUV has failed. Yes, that's right. Every single two-door SUV in history has failed. The two-door Chevy Tahoe failed. The Daihatsu Rocky failed. The Dodge Raider failed. So did the Mazda Navajo, the two-door Isuzu Trooper, the Isuzu Amigo, the two-door Jeep Cherokee, the two-door Kia Sportage, the U.S. market Land Rover Defender 90, the two-door Range Rover, the two-door Land Rover Discovery, the two-door Toyota 4Runner, the two-door Nissan Pathfinder, the two-door Toyota Land Cruiser, the Suzuki Vitara, the two-door Toyota RAV4, the two-door Mercedes G-Class, the Mini Paceman, the two-door GMC Yukon, the Isuzu Vehicross, the two-door Land Rover Freelander, the two-door Chevy S10 Blazer, the two-door GMC Jimmy, the two-door Ford Explorer, even the Chevy K5 Blazer and the Ford Bronco, which did well for a while, eventually failed. And yes, even the Jeep Wrangler, formerly a mighty two-door SUV, seems headed for failure. More than three-quarters of all new Wranglers have four doors. So the people at Land Rover know this. Presumably they've done all the research and they know all about all of the two-door SUV failures and they've crunched the numbers and then someone said, I've got it. We'll make a two-door SUV and we'll make it a convertible and we'll charge $70,000 for it. Brilliant, but there's a problem and you start to see it right away with this car. With the Evoque convertible, the utility portion of sport utility vehicle sort of disappears. Allow me to demonstrate by me, a grown human being, climbing into the back seat with the top up. <laughs> oh boy. See you, door. Ah. So basically, this thing is a two-seater sport utility vehicle because the two-door configuration makes it virtually impossible to climb into the back seats. And if you do climb in there, you'll find that there's really nowhere to put your legs once you're back there. But it gets worse from there. Now, because this thing is a convertible, Land Rover needed somewhere to put the convertible top when it was down. And to do that, they had to steal some cargo space a lot of cargo space. The result is that this vehicle only has 8.9 cubic feet of cargo volume. The Evoque convertible has less cargo space than a Chevy Corvette. It has less cargo space than a Porsche Cayman. The standard Range Rover Evoque has six times more cargo space than the Evoque convertible. And it gets worse yet. The convertible top significantly robs visibility when it's up because it folds over this car like a hat. This is the view you have to the rear when you're sitting in the front seat of this car. It isn't pretty. And this is the view you have 
over your shoulder. I've been driving this car around for three days. If it weren't for the advanced backup camera in this thing, I'm sure I would have already bumped into something I couldn't see, like a pole or a cone or a middle school. It's almost like Land Rover engineers looked at the Lamborghini Countach for inspiration on how to design this car's rearward visibility. And then there's the engine. Now, earlier I said that the Evoque convertible shares its engine with the Ford Fusion. That's true. This thing has a 240 horsepower EcoBoost four-cylinder. Yes, that's right, a four-cylinder. You can option this thing up to $70,000 and you only get a four-cylinder and there is no larger engine offered. That makes this one of the single most expensive four-cylinder vehicles currently available for sale. And so I go back to the whole utility thing. The Range Rover Evoque convertible has less cargo room than a Porsche Boxster. It also has the same number of usable seats as a Boxster. It has the same basic outward visibility as a Boxster. It costs more than a Porsche Boxster. It has less power than a Boxster, and obviously it doesn't provide the Porsche Boxster driving experience. So why don't you just get a Porsche Boxster. Well, I'll tell you why. Because this is a Range Rover, and Range Rovers are cool. And this car certainly won't let you forget that you're in a Range Rover. It says Range Rover on the front, and of course the rear. It says Range Rover on the door sill, and on the steering wheel. It says Range Rover on the owner's manual, and on the key. It even says Range Rover on these little hood vents, on the passenger side, and on the driver's side, and it says Range Rover on the glass on all the glass. And yes, it even says Range Rover in the headlights. I'm serious. As if they had to tell me that it's a Range Rover. I would have guessed it was a Range Rover anyway because Range Rovers are unreliable and this car has already had its share of issues, even though it has only 11,000 miles. For example, yesterday I was driving down the highway and I noticed that I was getting wet as I was driving. I took a look at the top and it turns out that the top is leaking. On an 11,000 mile, $70,000 car, the top is leaking. Fortunately, I'm happy to report that that only happens in hard rain. Also, I'm happy to report I would have known it was a Range Rover because when you roll the windows up and down in the rain, they squeal like a baby otter trying to give a distress call to its mother. I also know it's a Range Rover because of this ridiculous panel gap on the front fender. Now, the one on the door looks normal enough, and it's about the same size as the one on the fender. The problem is that the panel gap with the hood makes the one on the fender look about a half inch larger than the one on the door. It's a ridiculous styling touch, and it makes this thing look really, really cheap which is about par for the course. I also know it's a Range Rover because the windows were designed so that they don't go all the way down, making it difficult to rest your arm on the door with the top down in a convertible. Smart design. Now, I have to admit, it's not all bad. There are some things I like about the Evoque convertible, mostly the cool new tech features, which I'll show you now. For instance, it'll tell you what the speed limit is while you're driving down the street. It has an excellent backup camera that puts up useful icons to let you know if you're about to hit something. It has a cool feature that lets you choose what scenario you're driving in, including giant attacking snowflake or arrow or pitchfork. It also has a relatively good infotainment system that's intuitive, simple to use, and responsive to your touch commands. And then there's the automated parallel parking system. Now, regarding the Evoke Convertible's parallel parking system, I'm gonna activate it right now to get me out of, well, this isn't really a parking space, but let's see what happens. All right, shift in enough space to exit, shift into reverse and wait. Reverse with care, parking exit. Select D and wait. Oh, it just turned the wheel. Oh, oh, bye. Oh, now I have to take the wheel. Ah. It also has one of those buttons that can put all four windows up with the push of one single button and it can lower all four windows right back down again, which anybody who's watched any of my previous videos knows that I absolutely love. And then there's the Evoke Convertible's main party trick. It's convertible top. It doesn't require any manual unlatching or work. Just push a little button here in the center console, and then the top just does its thing. It gets rid of itself so that you can enjoy convertible top-down sunny bliss in your Range Rover. So the Evoque has some cool tech features, but you're probably wondering, how does it drive? What's it like to drive around in a two-door, $70,000 baby Range Rover convertible with four-cylinder power? Time to find out. All right, time to drive the Evoque convertible. Now, what is this? What is this? 
I drive my Evoke convertible with the top down. Unfortunately, for the sound, I gotta put the windows up, so I'm gonna look like one of those people. First and foremost, I should say, I've been a little bit unfair to Land Rover in this video. This car does not cost $70,000 unless you get a lot of options, although most of them I'm finding are in that price range, 65 to 70, because most people get a lot of options. It starts at something like $56,000. It's hard to consider the idea of a four-cylinder for this much money, and it accelerates like a four-cylinder. I mean, here's some floor in it. It's, it's fine. I don't know what the zero to 60 is, but it feels like seven or eight seconds. Uh, you're certainly not buying this car for its performance, I'll tell you that. You're also not buying this car for its styling, I'll tell you that. Yesterday, a friend of mine and I had this car, and we went down to South Beach, Miami, where everybody's super fashionable, and then there's a lot of tourists that look at the fashionable people, and uh, <laughs> people were taking pictures of this car and stuff, but I, I, I didn't get the sense they were admiring me. I thought they were like, what, what is that guy driving? Did he build that himself? The driving experience with the top down is fine. I mean, I, it's a, it feels like a convertible. The problem is it's just not a very sporty one. It doesn't handle very well. Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't accelerate very well. And so you really, it's hard to justify why you would want to buy this over most $70,000 convertibles like the Mercedes SLC or the Audi TT or the Boxster, which do handle well and do accelerate well. To me, it doesn't handle well for a $70,000 car or $65,000 car or even a $55,000 car. I mean, what does a Boxster start at? Probably around 60, maybe less. Put a few options in a Boxster. I mean, I would rather drive one of those a million times over. It's not like these back seats are really usable. But rides smoothly with the top down. Headroom's good and visibility's good. Uh, and the, the materials could use a little bit of an upgrade. There's some cheap plastic sort of in the interior here. The problem is they have to make the interior the same as the $38,000 Revoke SE base. Uh, I like this thing. I admit, I think it's crazy. You know, that they made it. It's funny and it's, and it's weird. And in that sense, I like it. I like the idea of a car company making a car like this. It's just that when you add economics to these decisions, uh, you know, it's fun that Land Rover built it, and it's fun for a car enthusiast just to see one because it's rarer than a normal Honda Accord, whatever, you know? But the problem is when you're an actual person going to the dealer or thinking about buying something like this, then it becomes a really hard sell. All right, I'm gonna try with the top up now. All right, so visibility now. I mean, you can see the back window that you can see on the camera is what I can see. That's the extent of it. Uh, it's, it's got good visibility in that little area, but the problem is that area is no bigger than a laptop. Tire noise is also higher than you'd expect. Then again, that could be because we know that the convertible top isn't really insulated all that well. <laughs> is it an interesting car? Absolutely. Is it a cool car? That depends on your definition of cool, but I will say this, for 70 grand, for 60 grand, for 55 grand, there are definitely better cars to buy. I would buy any of the sports car convertibles over this one. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Range Rover Evoque convertible. But before you go thinking that this is a vehicle that makes absolutely no sense, a vehicle that only fools would buy, think again. I drove this thing around for the last three days and I've come to a conclusion. The reason this thing costs $70,000 is because it is the only car in the whole world that allows you to provide top-down excitement and take you and some passengers into the off-road wilds. It is the only vehicle in the entire world that has this capability. No other car can do this. Oh darn. Well, yeah, but it doesn't say Range Rover on your headlights. Now, before I move on to the Doug score for the Evoque Cabriolet, I have a message for the people at Land Rover Corporate, because I know you're watching and because I know you're deep in development on the new Defender. And my message is make a convertible, make a convertible. I know what it's like to work at an automaker and not be certain if your product is going to sell, but do not use the poor sales of your bizarre Evoke convertible as a proxy for the new Defender. The Jeep Wrangler is a convertible off-road SUV that enjoys massive success in the United States with a loyal, devoted following and huge resale value. Your old Defender still sells for huge money here. I paid more than $60,000 for this one. I have a friend who just sold a low mileage one for over $80,000. They sell for more than the hard tops. There is a market. And so I say again, make a convertible, make 
a convertible. The Defender name is an icon and it will outlast us all. Don't screw it up. And once you make a Defender convertible, I will buy one at the sticker price and I will make a lot of videos about how wonderful it is, even if it's really not all that good. Just make a convertible. And now it's time for the Doug score of the other Land Rover convertible. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, I think we'd all agree this isn't exactly a handsome car. In fact, it's stubby and weird and it gets a 3 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds. The Doug score for acceleration is based on an objective scale and it earns a 1 out of 10. Handling is fine, good enough, but not a standout, no better than any other small SUV. It earns a 4 out of 10. Cool factor is debatable. As a car enthusiast who likes weird cars, I certainly think it's interesting, but this isn't exactly a car I'd want to use to roll up outside a club. It's an odd choice that people will find weird and it gets a 3 out of 10. As for importance, however, it's not insignificant. It's a rare and weird card that we will certainly always remember, and it gets a 5 out of 10. That brings the total weekend score to a mere 16 out of 50, placing it near the very bottom. Maybe it'll fare better in the daily categories, starting with features, where this car has a lot of stuff. Auto parking, heated steering wheel, it's all very good, though it falls short by not quite offering all the latest safety tech, even if you pay for every option. Still, it earns a strong 7 out of 10. Next up is comfort, which is good. If you aren't trying to sit in the back seat, there's no denying the Evoque convertible is a comfortable car, and it earns a 7 out of 10. Quality measures reliability and materials. Both are good, but not great. Land Rover reliability is continually getting better, and materials are nice, but not quite $70,000 nice, so it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is weak. It's 8.9 cubic feet of cargo room means it's really limited, and while gas mileage is good, the back seats don't do it any favors. It gets a mere 3 out of 10, which is the worst score yet for an SUV. And finally, there's value. Value, and I'm sorry, but I just don't see it, especially at sixty to seventy thousand dollars. This car is going to depreciate fast, but it won't make much sense at fifty grand either. It gets a three out of ten for a total daily score of twenty-six out of fifty, placing it near the middle. Add the two scores together, and the Evoque convertible has a Doug score of forty-two out of one hundred, making it one of the worst cars I've tested, behind the Aztec and ahead of stuff like the Yugo and the Trabant. I'm sure the new Defender convertible will fare much better, right? Land Rover? Usually it's easier to get out. What do I do? I hope there's no driver. It doesn't say Range Rover on your headlights. Well done, well done!